uh, not knowing if their buildings are safe amid concerns about this uh, rack. That's the uh, reinforced autoclaved aerated concrete. Really slips off the tongue, that. Uh, I want to know who's to blame. Uh, and why? Do get in touch. Tweet me at Talk TV. Text uh, 8722. Give us a call on 0344 499 1000. Love to get your thoughts on all of that. Right now, let's get the thoughts of Labour's Shadow Commons leader. That's uh, Labour MP Thangham Debonair, who joins us live from Westminster. Good morning to you. Good morning, Julia. Thank it's you. good to be back on your Lo show again. Lovely to see you in the sunshine out there. Can't wait to get out there. Lots of us will enjoy it. It seems like some uh, parents and pupils may be enjoying it rather longer, with some schools being told they have to close some buildings, uh, move out altogether, uh, some going to remote learning, because buildings are unsafe due to this, this reinforced autoclaved aerated concrete. Um, who do you blame for this? Well, I've got to say, it goes back to 2010 when the incoming Tory Lib Dem government cancelled Labour's Building Schools for the Future programme. Now, we set that up in 1997 when we came into government because we knew that there were thousands of school buildings that were going to come to the end of their design life by 2020. 10,000 built before 1941, another further 14,000 built up until about the 80s. That needed doing, the Labour government got on with it and the incoming Tory government cancelled it. Now, since then, Unfortunately, we've had further <laughs> acts. We've had a Chancellor, one Rishi Sunak, who virtually halved the building maintenance budget. That was back in 2020. We've had the successive Tory governments who've ignored the warning signs, starting with the beam that fell down in a school in Kent in 2018. And even this summer, even this week, we've had a woeful failure of the government to come clean. Labour tried to force a vote back in May to get the government to be honest about the damage to schools and which school buildings were safe or unsafe. They failed to take the challenge then. I do hope they realise that today the single best thing they could do for parents, children and teachers is what a Labour government would do and that's come clean, publish the list and make sure parents know whether or not their children are safe to go yeah, to school. We certainly it should be the most basic. We do absolutely need to see that list no, for, for pupils, teachers, other staff and children. Gillian Keegan, the Education Secretary, has said that, that most of affected schools will be open. That's certainly the policy they're taking in uh, in Scotland. Um, but again, it's all very well saying this goes back to 2010. Well, the, these buildings were, they were put up in the, you know, 50s and 60s mostly. It was then found out sort of 20 years later there was a problem. We had some collapsing uh, roofs in, in the 1980s. There was a report in the late 1990s saying a lot of these schools have got to be replaced. Now, I was a political uh, reporter, in fact, a political editor uh, around that time. I've looked back at the cuttings. No one was writing about this. This wasn't talked about. I'd never heard until last week this of, of, of rack. I'm pretty sure you hadn't either. Um, Labour were in charge for an awful lot of time as well. I'm not saying there haven't been problems since 2010. The government is responsible for anything it did or didn't do in that time. But you didn't do very much about it. There was a school rebuilding programme, yes, but it wasn't because of this. It was because of a range of problems, though, Kay. Uh, but it, I'm, I'm sorry, Julia. It was a range of problems, and that's a real pr difficulty here because we had a good assessment of what the problems were. We were tackling a range of problems. Some of them needed school buildings building anew. Some needed them repairing. Some needed them refurbing. Some just needed them maintaining properly. And that's what we did between 1997 and 2010. We worked through methodically. We were aware of the fact that the pre-1941 buildings would come to the end of their design life in 2020, and okay. we were taking action. Can I just come that can you, point, can you point me, difference. when this building programme was cancelled, yeah, you know, we know, I mean, I went to a bog-standard comp with flat roofs, we had rain pouring in, uh, you know, this is in the 1980s, uh, um, and, you know, that I was, in a, I was in a porter cabin for one entire year. Again, you know, not, not a pleasant experience, I'm not sure it imp impaired my learning, but it wasn't, I'm sure, not very nice for teachers either. But I don't recall, since 2010, um, I don't recall at any point Labour saying in Parliament in questions or raising it with the media, look, we've got a whole load of schools that we didn't get round to replacing this terribly dangerous rack, this reinforced autoclave aerated concrete. School buildings are at danger of collapse. Could you point me to a press release saying that? Because yes, I don't think there I is can. one. Can On I? The... Can you? On the, on the 26th of May this year, we had this an Opposition Day debate yeah. which referred to the rack. Before that, 
Bridget Phillipson, our Shadow Education Secretary, has asked over 150 questions on the topic of school safety, including the RAC. Now, that's gone on Since for when? months and months and months. And months, every it's gone on for months. months. First, first, recording, Absolutely months. first recording of this I can find in, the, in the British in media is in yeah. July last year, uh, Thangham. Look, you, you're saying media. Labour knew that's about the this, they warned about this, and nothing was done, and it's all Rishi Sunak and Boris Johnson and everyone else. And, because and it is. But, because no, but, but, because in but you've never raised it. You never raised it. We have. Yes, Not until we have last in 2018, year. The gov no, that the government knew in 2018 that a conflict was happening. The Labour government in knew in, a in 1997. In they, we were, and we had the Building Schools for the Future programme to try and remedy it. That wasn't why you were building schools for schools, because a load of schools need... I was covering yes, was. everything it's that Tony Blair was saying. We I don't remember RAC ever being mentioned. Apart. Well, OK, we're going to have to agree to disagree on this OK, I'm Let me... I appreciate you don't remember it. No, I, no, I've got a very good memory, and I've checked the cuttings in the newspapers. They don't exist, though, because it wasn't talked about. Let me ask you about something that does exist today. We were um, in government. We talked about it in government. We talked about it. Our schools, you our didn't talk about. State, you didn't say... Secretaries of State talked about building schools for yes, the future. Yes, of course you did, but you didn't say, because we've got a whole load of schools that have been built with this concrete that's like an aero bar, and it's going to collapse, and all of our kids well, are going to die in collapsing classrooms. We could that have... That never came up. Well, I am... It was the most important issue, but it never certain. kept up. Uh, the most important issue is that our children have decent schools to be educated in, and that's yeah, why yeah. we had the Agree Building Schools for the Future okay. programme. And it did refurb, Let it did repair, it did maintenance, and yeah. it did building new schools. We need to spend more money on our schools. I couldn't agree with you more on that. Let me ask you about a Labour's attack ad that's gone out tonight. This is very hard hitting. It echoes some of the other attack ads that you've put out in the past. A picture of a very smiley Rishi Sunak looking very polished in his seat. Do you think your child's school should be safe? Rishi Sunak doesn't. Is that fair? Do you honestly believe? Let's judge. Do you honestly believe that the Prime Minister doesn't think that children's schools should be safe? Let's judge him on his record. In 2020, as Chancellor, he halved the amount of money for school maintenance. In 2018, he was in government when he knew that the building in Kent, the school building in Kent, had suffered a collapse because of this concrete. He's known for months. Bridget Phillipson, the Shadow Education Secretary, has been challenging his government for months. Where's the evidence that he's shown any signs of care? Throughout the summer, his Secretary of State, Gillian Keegan, could have been warning schools, could have been working with them, and she wasn't. Now, that's down to Rishi Sunak's weak leadership, and what could be more important than children's education that's literally our future and he's shown no signs whatsoever and every parent in the country will be asking themselves today where were the signs that this government had any care for our children's safety whatsoever i'd like to see them and they could start by publishing the list of schools today that would be progress you definitely need that list yeah where, where this absolutely should have been dealt with far sooner i would say plague on everyone's houses and that fault can i play you a very 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 quick uh, uh, quote uh, a clip from Jeremy Hunt, the Chancellor. He was speaking to Laura Kunzberg on the BBC yesterday, talking about how ministers are going to act. Here's what he had to say. We will spend what it takes to make sure that children can go to school safely, yes. And parents should know that. They should also know that we won't take any risks with their children's safety. So when new information comes to light, however awkward or difficult it is, uh, we will act to make sure their children are safe. Trouble with that, Thangham Debonair, is that uh, a few hours later, Treasury sources said there wouldn't be any extra money in the education budget. It would have to come out of the existing budget. What would Labour's policy be if you were in charge right now? Where would that money come from? We would have come clean already. We wouldn't have cancelled the building schools for the future okay, program back in 2010. And right now, and right now, without an assessment of how many schools are damaged and to what extent, which the government is refusing to publish, we have no way of knowing what the extent is and what it would cost. It would be irresponsible, and you would rightly hold me to account, Julia, if I started making announcements and spending commitments based on no evidence. We don't know what the count is at the moment. I urge the government to come okay. clean, and then they hopefully will take action before the next general election. If they want to go into the next general election having not fixed this problem, we will pick up the tab and well, by then I hope we'll have a better idea of what state well, they've left the economy no one, in and no how one, they've managed this crisis. The election's realistically going to be next year. No one thinks it's going to be resolved next year. Have you ever tried to get a builder in the last couple of years? Well, but, but, but here's the thing. Uh, Jeremy Khan's basically saying years, they will spend... They've had years, Julia. They've yes, known so about did, this so problem did, for years. Yes, they did and they failed and so did Labour and you failed too. He says, Jeremy no, Khan said we will spend... The future what program, it, which they cancelled. He said he will spend 
what it takes, presumably, I mean, you're... I mean, and it will come out of existing OK, budgets. yes, but you're saying Rishi Sunak, in this ad, says, do you think your child's school should be safe? If you think... And Rishi Sunak doesn't. If you think child's schools should be safe, you'll spend whatever it takes as well. So where is that money? It's going to be in the billions. That money isn't available in the school budget right now. We've already seen, or was it, a 9% fall in per pupil spending since 2010 on, on pupils in, in England schools. Where will you raise that money from? Whether it's 100 billion, 10 billion or 1 billion, where would you raise that money? Julia, I don't know what state the economy is going to be in in two weeks, never mind two years or 12 months or however long it is until we Fair unfortunately point. have to wait for the next general election. I don't know when that is. I don't know what damage they're going to do to the economy. Last year we had a disastrous Tory budget which sent people's mortgages and rents skyrocketing and undermined our ability to raise money for the public finances. Now, if the Tories want to go to the country right now, we would get a better idea much sooner of what damage they've done and what potential there is for repairing the schools and getting them back on track where Labour would have left them in 2010. Okay. We would have got these secondary schools sorted by now. These Tories are to blame for it. And as soon as possible, okay. when we get into government, we will be doing everything we can to repair every bit okay. of Tory damage that has been yeah. done well, over the last 13 years. Yeah, and years. again, I'd love to see what Labour would have done post-2010, uh, uh, given the uh, the spending and, with the building spending and the taxing programme plans on Julia. Julia. We would have cancelled our own programme. Well, well, I, I don't know. Thank you, Let me ask you about something we're told is going to happen today. Last week, we had that mini reshuffle by uh, the Prime Minister. We're told that Keir Starmer, the Labour leader is going to reshuffle his front bench team. Are you confident that you're still going to be in the job as shadow leader of the House of Commons by the end of the day or are you hoping for a move somewhere else? It's up to Keir Starmer to decide who he wants to be in his top team to deliver on his five missions, which are so important for transforming our country and for the lives of working people. Keir is a smart guy. He will have thought about this. He will be making sure that he's got the right team in place to deliver on those five missions, get our country to net zero, rebuild our struggling public services okay. and cut crime on our streets. There must be... That's what I'm focused no, we've on. All, we've all worked in a lot of different offices, been on different teams. There must be someone you think, frankly, is not pulling their weight, who she needs to be dumped. It's just you and me chatting, uh, private uh, chat th between the girls. Thank them. Come on. Who do you think should go? Uh, well, Julia, I know your viewing figures are much more between than me, just me and you. I'm not going to speculate on that. I think it's really important we take the job of running the country seriously. Okay. Keir's going to be the next Prime Minister if we win the next general election. It's up to him. Okay. I respect that. I think his judgment is brilliant and I will serve him whatever position he wants. Bang of Debonair, great to talk to you. She's shadow leader of the House of Commons, giving it both bowels there on the government. They definitely think that they are onto a winner here.